commentary. Neil here. Houston, we have a problem. Um, it's March the 20th. It's the vernal equinox. Today is the first day, official first day of spring. I just read that this morning somewhere. It's a national holiday. We had an amazing snowstorm the last three days. Like another meter of fresh powder snow with cold temperatures. Even now as I head down the mountain, it's minus one degree. Very nice. Today it kind of broke off and it was sunny, but it was still cold. It was just exquisite. Everything covered in snow. It looked like January, middle of January, really. It was beautiful. Um, the problem is, no one's here. <laughs> For the locals, that's a great thing, you know? It's like when your ski resort is empty and there's powder and you're riding it, and you're like, this is the greatest thing ever. All the tourists went home, there's powder, there's no lift lines, this is great. And it is great, I totally agree with that, 100%. But, uh, if you're part of the economic wheel that needs to keep on turning, um, it's not that great. So, I don't know what's happened, but this year, everyone that I talk to, hotel managers, ski resort people, etc. You know, January and February was just rocking. It was super busy. Lots of tourists from around the world coming to ski and snowboard and tourists that don't even ski and snowboard. Japan has a lot of the, you know, non no sports tourists. They just come to see the snow. We get a lot of tourists from Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, Korea, South Korea, etc. Um, and there was a lot of that, and it was it was very busy. It's it, it was nice. It was like wow, it's, it's, it's back to normal, or even beyond what it was before 2019. And everyone seemed to think that that was going to continue on into March and maybe even April. We were sort of under that impression, but boy, is it really slacked off here in March. And I'm just kind of wondering uh, what happened. Now, March for Japan, just to give you a little cultural background on, on what, is, what is March in Japan. March is graduation season, and it is the last month of Japan's fiscal year. So Japan kind of runs on this April to April calendar. Businesses, most businesses that they set up their fiscal year like that, uh, the school year ends in March and starts up again in April. There's the spring holiday, a break. So March is filled with graduation ceremonies, elementary, junior high, high school, university, the whole uh, education system. Then you get this like spring break, and then we get back into the school year in April, and businesses too. So when um, a company, you know, like these large nationwide companies, they move their employees around, and people will, you know, have to like pack up, uh, move to a new location, start their new job, or even kids, uh, young people coming out of universities, going into their first. Uh, job at a large corporation, you know, they might have to move, set up shop, there's a lot of orientation, that kind of stuff. So, March, admittedly, is a very busy month, culturally, for Japan. It really is. And if you have kids who have a graduation or going into a new school, there's like, you know, you have to go buy uniforms and there's, there's all kinds of stuff going on. So, especially for elementary, junior high, and high school. There's a lot of stuff that has to be taken care of. University students right now, around March the 20th, they're already on like a spring holiday. So, actually, we're getting quite a few like university students coming to ski and snowboard at the resorts. We do see that. And uh, at the hotels, it's a lot of like groups or like groups of these young young guys or young girls and they're they're on their sort of spring holiday vacation which is nice but obviously young kids they don't have a lot of cash to spend they're kind of trying to be 
you know, economically wise, and uh, they're on a bit of a budget, totally understandable. As far as the tourism goes, some, we're, today, even today at the resort, uh, a lot of South Korean skiers and snowboarders. I think snowboarding must be booming, or snow sports in general must be like really kind of peaking in popularity in South Korea right now. Because we've seen a lot of uh, tourists coming over to ride and ski from South Korea. And that's that's great. I think that's that's great. They're also really into golf. And they come to Hokkaido a lot in the summer for golfing. So it might sort of be like a new generation is really coming into it. Uh, and a lot of them seem to be younger, 20s and 30s. I don't know if their economy is doing real well right now or what's happening, but we do see quite a few Korean tourists. China in general is down as a whole, but they are there. You do hear people speaking Chinese and see groups. Could also be from Taiwan. It's kind of hard uh, for me to know if people are from Taiwan or from mainland China. Taiwan, amazingly good skiers and snowboarders in Taiwan. Uh, they travel a lot for their skiing and snowboarding and uh, they're getting better and better. Really, really good. Doing a lot of backcountry and a lot of powder riding as well. So where am I trying to go with this? Oh yeah, well basically uh, what really disappeared was the North American and European skiing and snowboarding community. Gone. like Thanos snapped his fingers and all the Caucasian people disappeared. That's kind of what it feels like. <laughs> um, where did everybody go? I would like to know if you have any info or ideas. My general idea, this is, this is my theory, my thesis of what happened to the Western ski snowboard community. I believe that, you know, December, around the holidays, January and February, Japan just has that, like, Japanuary image. Powder, Japan, rice balls, sushi, let's go. And I think everybody makes reservations way ahead of time. And they plan out their December, January, and February pretty rock solid. And I think a lot of that momentum New Zealand, Australia, Europe, the Nordic countries, Canada, America, etc. Even South America. I saw quite a few Brazilians this year. Yeah, Brazilians is what we saw. That, that's about it, I think. Um, I think they'll kind of lock in those, those holidays. And then, I think what everybody's doing is March is kind of that, March and April, you know, you, you kind of want to watch what the weather does. You want to see where it's snowing. Is it snowing in America? Is it snowing in Canada? Should we go to Alaska? Maybe, maybe the Alps is good. And if you've got the budget and the time and you're really into snow sports, I think you can wait a little bit and maybe in January or even in February, you can start looking around the world, checking those, you know, global snow reporting sites or forecasts and go, oh man, Canada is just getting blasted let's go to Mike Wiggly's or let's go do some catboarding or some heliboarding or etc. Maybe the prices come down, things you know start to loosen up a little bit, it's not so crowded, you can make a reservation at the last minute. Whereas January, February, you can't do that. So that is my, con my thesis is that people are keeping March as a very flexible month to say, hey, Let's change our plans. Let's go here. We were thinking about late season Japan to avoid the crowds, but actually it's snowing a lot in Tahoe. Let's go to Tahoe. Is that what's happening? Please, somebody, help me out here in the comments. Let me know what you think the uh, snow community is doing and how they're setting up their seasons. Now for us here in, in uh, Japan though, uh, I think as a whole, tourism, industry and economy really needs to focus on uh, 
doing a little more promotional work for the spring season. I mean, it's, it's always been an issue. It's always been talked about. Spring is, it's just really, it's so good. That's the thing, it's so good. The mountains are great. Even like right now, we're still riding powder here in late March, but into April, obviously it's gonna warm up. It's gonna be, you know, slushy spring uh, skiing and snowboarding, but Japan is just, it's fantastic. It's such a good spring skiing uh, spot that it, it always just seems so wasted. It was like if more people were here enjoying this, this would be great. And that goes for the Japanese population as well. I'm always trying to find ways to convince people that they should continue skiing. But like I said, culturally, March, tough month. April, start of the new school year. People are spending their money on things like, you know, textbooks and uniforms and other stuff. So I do understand that it can be kind of hard to convince people to come to the mountains. Now, that being said, there are some real bargains. There are spring lift passes, like those short spring season seasons passes. I think uh, Sapporo Kokusai has one that's on sale now all the way to the end of the season for uh, 17,000 yen, which is like 110 bucks or something. It's like very cheap. You could come over, uh, stay for two weeks, get one of those passes, ride every day. Fantastic. I think it's a great season for bargains, so think about that. And uh, yeah, if you have any comments or ideas um, in any direction, you know, as I said, wh what you think people are doing, I'd love to hear it. And if you have some ideas about what Japan should do to try to bring more people or create some kind of awareness about how good spring is, let me hear it leave me some comments I really enjoy the comments I've been getting a lot more comments this year and that has been fun and it's increased my uh, knowledge capacity thanks for contributing to the channel okay that's it um, Houston we've solved the problem <laughs> drive safe